here, when it goes live, who knows anymore. But welcome, 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 welcome. Glad that you guys are here watching another one of these wonderful, wonderful videos. We can put out about, probably about three a week. So it got a little bit trickier now that things are kind of getting back to normal, finding that time. But you're finding time to watch these. So as long as you're finding time, we're going to find time to do this. So today we are going on, as we continue on our 3030 challenge, um, we're looking at New City Catechism. So if you are one of our uh, adults out there and going through this, or if you've never gone through the book, uh, we are on question eight today. Question eight, what is the law of God stated in the Ten Commandments? What is the law of God stated in the Ten Commandments? So here it is. What is the law of God stated in the Ten Commandments? You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. You shall not covet. Now, uh, that's a lot. That's a huge answer. And essentially, if you learn that, you've learned what the Ten Commandments are. And so I do think that that's a helpful thing for you to go through. But what does the law of God say in the Ten Commandments? So I, I think Christians should know. Like if I were to ask you right now, uh, what are the Ten Commandments? You would probably fire off, you know, lying, stealing, murder, maybe. Uh, but then I think a lot of time, if I, in my kind of conversation with other Christians, uh, it becomes really tricky for people to be able to fire off the Ten Commandments. We should know them because it's important. Uh, he here's one of the reasons why it is important. Um, you know, if you were to think about something like what is said in James, for whoever keeps the entire law yet stumbles at one point is guilty of breaking it all. For he who said do not commit adultery also said do not murder. So if you don't commit adultery but you murder, you're a lawbreaker. It's important for us to know the commandments. Now here's what's at stake, guys. The law is provided to show us our sinfulness. You know, when we read the laws in the Bible, a lot of people get all worried about what that's all about. And then the whole point is you can't keep it. Yeah, you know, one of the things that James is in there is because if you're somebody who's clinging to how good of a person you are, what a you know good rule keeper you are, maybe you're somebody who's black and white everything for you, and you do of your best to make sure you've kept every single one of those laws. Uh, the truth is, there's going to be an area that you're going to let slide. And um, as James is hammering out, if you think you've got it well because you've you've kept most of them, that's not good enough. Uh, what the, what the, the scriptures demands is complete obedience to the law. And so in one respect, we look at the Ten Commandments and we see, man, we are not anywhere close to where we need to be. But that's the beauty of the Ten Commandments, too, is it's to drive you to the gospel. When you recognize that you are not, you're not as good of a person as you think you are, um, that's really helpful. That's a great starting point because we need to get to that point. Every one of us should get to a point where we evaluate our life according to the Ten Commandments, especially. And you're able to see, yeah, I can't make it. I'm not good enough. I don't know how I'm going to make it. Well, then that's where Jesus comes in. Jesus came because Jesus fulfilled the law. Jesus came and obeyed in all ways and was willing to offer up his perfect record for your imperfect one at the cross. When he was killed, he was buried, and three days later rose again, and now he's at the, the right hand of the Father, shows that he could do that. He could take your record and exchange it for his. So one of the things we talk about the law is the law is to drive us to Jesus. The law is to, is to drive us to show us how sinful we are. Uh, but the law is also helpful because you, know, you do need the law. You know, the law over time in the life of a Christian should be something that teaches about what God wants. A lot of time, we live in a society, too, where we don't want to be told what to do. Don't tell me what to do with my body. Don't tell me what to do and how to live my life. No rules, no restrictions. We are very much an anti-rule based society. Even, even think culturally. Congress writes laws, and then depending on what administration, you either keep them or you don't. Like, laws are pretty arbitrary to us. And when we think of the Bible, though, we need to recognize uh, they're there for a reason. They're there to teach us really about God, and especially I, I teach in my class on the Torah. When you read the Old Testament laws, you should be reading about what does this teach me about who God is? What does this teach me about 
what his heart is on this situation. What am I supposed to learn? They're not there for me to, to just kind of brush over because I don't like law, but I'm supposed to let me teach me who God is and what he thinks about stuff. I, I want us to think a little bit more too, uh, as you go through, um, Jesus, in talking about the law, uh, also says these words. He's tested on this. And notice in 22, 34, uh, Matthew 22, verse 34, it says, When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they came together. And one of them, an expert teacher in the law, asked a question to test him. Teacher, which command in the law is the greatest? Now, granted, remember, this is kind of one of those things. Like, if you're going to have to pick and choose one to follow, what's it going to be? And he goes and said, uh, love the Lord your God with all your heart all your soul, with all your mind. This is the greatest and the most important command. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. And all the law and the prophets depend on these two commands. So this is really important, right? Because you're looking, you're like, uh, I just opened mine up and I didn't see those in the Ten Commandments. Well, because they're not. But those are all commands that are in the law as well. But what Jesus is doing there, which I think is really, really cool, is this. I'm going to write if my slick little uh, pen here and show you something um, right here. So check this out. When he says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, uh, all your soul and all your mind, this is commands one through four. They deal with our relationship with God. Then if you actually follow through the rest of the Ten Commandments, it's these ones. These are the ones, uh, you know, five through ten. Uh, these are dealing with our relationship to others. And so what Jesus is saying is that how we treat the Lord, how we put God first, and then how we love others, everything hinges on those. And so I want you to begin to understand that that the law, the Ten Commandments, is a vertical piece of here's how my relationship is to the Lord. And then there's always the horizontal piece too of how should that play out and how I have relationships with other people. And so keep that in mind as well uh, as we begin to think about what does the law entail. Ultimately, the law is to drive me to closer to love the Lord. And as I spend time with the Lord, it should inevitably come through me and make it to where I'm going to love others. If I'm truly loving people, I'm not going to want to commit adultery. If I'm truly loving somebody, I'm not going to want to murder them. If I'm truly loving, I'm not going to want to, want to you know, um, you know, steal from them. But the same things be said is if I truly love the Lord, then those things should not be there. So as a, as a Christian, right? Prior to my, my faith in Jesus, I am a lawbreaker who desperately needs salvation. Post-salvation, or post-believing you know, in Jesus, so to speak, um, you are now at a point where my record's been clean, but now I want to follow God because I want to do these things that are pleasing. I want to live in light of what he set forward. And so the more time I spend with God, the more I will want to obey and follow through and get to know him more and to love him more. And you see that in the first four. And then the more time I love God and I spend time with him, that kind of permeates the rest of my life with how I relate to others as well. And so that's where Jesus is able to say that it, it these hinge on these two, loving the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind, and then also loving your neighbor as yourself. Okay, that is all I got for you for right now. So I hope you are going through this. We'll be taking these a bit uh, apart a little bit more, some of those laws going through. Um, but uh, take a look at that this week. Try to memorize this. I think it'd be helpful to know what the Ten Commandments actually are. And don't just try to just kind of pretend you do, because we're a lot of pretenders. But let's stop. Let's get real. Let's try to make it uh, something that we remember. Remember the order, too, because it's kind of cool the way that Jesus talks about that, the, how they kind of set up by loving God and loving others. Okay, guys, we're done. I hope uh, you guys have a great weekend. We'll see you Sunday. Get ready. We're going on, and we're talking about Daniel chapter 7. And if this is the future and you're watching this, then I'm probably not talking about Daniel chapter 7. I'm probably talking about something else. But I hope that you will watch this and come hang out with us. All right. Take care, guys. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.